Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, the show that is part of the Simply Luxurious Life online destination, cultivating true contentment, the art of living a life of quality over quantity. Visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, at our simplified URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com to find the show notes for each podcast episode, as well as much more weekly content to elevate your everyday and deepen your contentment. From a Monday motivational post, recipes, videos of the cooking show series, style and decor inspiration, French and British inspired content, and reader's favorite regular weekly post, This and That, which is posted each Friday morning. Now to today's episode. Welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the 353rd episode of The Simple Sophisticate. And welcome to the final days of winter here in the Northern Hemisphere as we look ahead to spring, which will begin on Monday the 20th this year in the afternoon, I believe is the exact time depending upon where you are on (laughs) the, the clock, I guess I should say, which is what partly inspired today's topic. However, what largely inspired today's topic was an email from a listener. I want to thank Kirsten for reaching out a couple weeks ago. And she asked a question inquiring if I could share more information on a particular topic or if I already had. And as I knew I had already written about it, but it was many years ago, I went back before I responded and I looked at the content. And while the PDF was pretty good detail... Um, that was available and referenced in the book, my first book, the post was very sparse. And I thought to myself, well, that was 12 years ago. This would be a great topic to explore and turn into a podcast episode. So that's what I did. And so today's episode is titled A Stress-Reducing Year-Round Schedule for House Cleaning and Maintenance for a Small Household. And I wanted to really focus on the concept of a small household. And what I mean by small household is it could be someone like myself. Yes, it could be a single individual who either lives with animals and pets or not. Could be a couple, so just two people. Could be a couple with animals. Could be empty nesters. Any situation, and, and, and also it, it pertains to having a smaller house or, or a smaller apartment. Um, so, but, but you want it to feel cozy and nice and clean, but you also, if you're like me, don't particularly enjoy cleaning. And I will just say that right out of the gate and I'll say it a few more times during this episode, I am sure. However, having a clean and organized home is, is almost as priceless as priceless can be if it wasn't priceless. Um, (laughs) because it does cost something, it costs your time. But that's why I wanted to really explore how to make this a stress-reducing approach. And that's why it's year-round. And even though a lot of people like to think of spring as spring cleaning, time to really get in and clean out, don't get me wrong. I'll do that with certain things in my life. My gardening, um, with my wardrobe, because I do that a couple times a year. But there is no reason to put it all in one time of the year, because that just becomes stressful. And um, anyway... I've broken it down into six different concepts or focus points, and each are pretty detailed, so I'll walk you through them. And then we're going to conclude with a petit plaisir that is all about relaxing and savoring at the end of a day that's very inexpensive and a pleasure that I enjoy nearly every single evening. So let's get right in to our topic, a stress-reducing year-round schedule for house cleaning and maintenance for a small household. A tidy sanctuary creates mental space 
to find calm more readily. Upon walking into my home, as many of you know, I've named it Le Papillon, knowing and then witnessing that it has been cleaned, tidied, and unnecessary items have been removed, whether that be emptying the recycling basket in the boot and basket room, also known as my mudroom, or clearing the countertops of extraneous items, and having fresh flowers in the house. I breathe some of the deepest breaths I ever take during my days when I can walk into my house and see this and then experience it and live in it. Distractions to the mind come into our lives in a variety of ways, and I have shared and discussed 11 different forms of distraction on a particular post that I've linked in the show notes and gone into great detail. And one such way of distraction is the clutter of the items in our home. Items without a home, too many items, dusty, dirty, disorganized spaces, counters, windows, fabrics, floors, just dusty. No doubt, I am not sharing anything you don't already know, but how do we tend to our homes and still have time and energy to live the lives we want to live? I will admit to being nearly totally in alignment with Simone Beauvoir's train of thinking when it comes to house cleaning. Quote, few tasks are more like the torture of Sisyphus than housework. With its endless repetition, the clean becomes soiled, the soiled is made clean, over and over, day after day. End quote. And if you know Sisyphus in Greek mythology, you know that he was being punished by Zeus for the rest of his life and would always be pushing this boulder or rock up a mountain only to see it roll back down the mountain again. And he'll have to start pushing it back up only to see it roll back down the mountain again. (laughs) So this idea of a, a perpetually repeating task that we have to tend to, I don't enjoy it, but I know it has to be done. And if there was a magic wand to wave whenever the house needed its regular clean and tidy, I would wave it without hesitation regularly and often. I recognize that some may find calm in the practice of cleaning, and that is fine. In fact, for temporary moments, it felt as though I couldn't get anything to work for me, or it was something seemed out of control, and what I could control was cleaning the kitchen or cleaning my wardrobe out or, or, you know, there was something in my house that needed cleaning and by goodness, I was going to clean it out because that's what I could control. And in those moments, it would cause much calm. But it wasn't because I enjoyed cleaning. It was because of the calm I couldn't find in my days. And so the more I have learned how to be content, to control my mind, to navigate through those unwanted feelings it's not cleaning I reach to, I don't get to that point as much or at all. And I instead breathe deeply. And I accept that there might be things that I can't control. And I let go. And I trust that I can navigate going forward. So it's not so much that I enjoy cleaning, but I have, I have to share that because I know there's probably many people out there that have done the same thing. You find calm and, and, and control in those moments. But at the same time, wouldn't you want to be doing something else because you already have a clean home? That's the thing that I want to talk about here. How can we make it very simple to keep our houses clean, but at the same time rest easy because we know it's not building up because we haven't been tending to it? And so that's part of what motivated me to recreate or actually just polish and deepen the list I had created back in 2011. As I was thinking of all the time and energy that we can have remaining to do something constructive, to explore a curiosity, to read a book, to rest our eyes after a long, grueling, yet productive week, to spend more time with those we love, to spend more time in our own company, getting to know ourselves better, to take a longer walk with the pups, to snuggle with our cat who is seeking our company after we've been away at the office all day. These are all things that I would rather do than clean my house. And I share these possibilities of what we might choose to do with more time, regular time, consistently available to point out that while cleaning and caring for our homes is a necessity, there are many different approaches to doing so well to gain the benefits of such a space that is our sanctuary. Apart from hiring a regular cleaning service, which I have done in the past and I may do again in the future, even if they come every other week 
or weekly, we still can care for our homes thoughtfully as well as simply in order to enjoy all the time we find ourselves in our home. Because the cleaning service is not going to be there at the end of a dinner party. The cleaning service is not going to be there on the day that you had a rough one and you just need to relax and you need to come home to a clean house. You can't plan that. You can't predict that necessarily. So one of my chapters in my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, Making Your Every Days Extraordinary and Discovering Your Best Self, goes into great detail about living small. And it's in chapter 13. It's just simply titled Living Small. 20 pages. I dive into all sorts of benefits and ideas for living luxuriously, but living physically in a smaller space. And one such reasons of having a smaller space to call home is that we just logically have less to clean. However, just because we may live, choosing or not, in a small home doesn't mean the home can't be luxurious. In decoration, in organization, in consideration for everything, we can live luxuriously in a small home. And the beauty is we have an advantage. We have less to clean, less to furnish, less to organize. Now we just have to figure out how to do so wisely and with great savvy. So I mentioned 2011. So back in 2011, I shared a brief post detailing what to clean and how often throughout the year in our homes. And I paired the post with a free printable PDF of this cleaning schedule. But it was brief, and that was more than 10, 11 years ago. So with the prompting, as I mentioned, from the reader who emailed me, um, she shared with me that she was sharing her home with her husband and their pets. And they don't have children, similar to myself. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to update and share with you how to clean and maintain your home throughout the year so that when spring does roll around, you don't feel overwhelmed by the spring cleaning fever that often arises. And I completely get it. As I mentioned, it feels good to freshen up the entire house, but I don't have time. And maybe you don't either, or nor the energy to do so all in one swoop once a year. Rather, what makes sense to me is a steady, smart approach in both how and what I clean and maintain to avoid large repair bills due to lack of attention. So let's take a look at this list. And again, I will provide an updated PDF at the end of this um, podcast and you can find it on the show notes. You just click on it and it'll pop up and you can print it. It'll just list with checks in each box when to do certain tasks. And um, let's get started. Number one. Begin with a home and its contents that you actually use and need. In other words, this is a one-off. This is not a regular practice, but something to keep in the back of your mind after you tend to it. So you're going to start here. We're going to start with a clean slate. We're going to make sure that everything in our home, we're going to basically Marie Kondo your home. And this whole concept of if you love it, if it's functional, keep it. So using the William Morris famous quote, right? But this idea of really intentionally, thoughtfully asking yourself this question, and it's a quote from Peter Walsh, and he says, the stuff you own has to help you create the life you want. And if it doesn't, why is it in your home? So bring that question to basically everything in your home. The most difficult time and the most work that will be entailed is the first time you do this. And as I look around my own home, and it's small and square footage, but large to the eye with its high ceilings and multiple south-facing windows that let in oodles of light, which create this illusion of more space, borrowed space, so to speak, I will tend to this question room by room throughout the year. And I've been doing it since I moved into the house um, now almost four years ago. And so I edited a lot when I moved here, but especially with the construction over the past three years, the rec- the customizations, I have really edited and thoughtfully considered each item. So for example, my kitchen cupboards and drawers received a thorough edit during the kitchen remodel back in 2020 when everything was removed and stored in my guest room. Nothing says reduce and eliminate the unnecessary when you have no more floor space in your guest bedroom to put anything do I really need that? Insert whatever item it might be because I've never used it, not once, never ever. 
let's consign this, shall we, Shannon? I mean, it became very clear and very easy and nothing could hide because it literally had to be taken out of the cupboard. So I've listed um, a handful of collections and spaces and items to, to seriously look at in your own home at some point. Don't do this all at spring. Don't do this all here next week. You will exhaust yourself, but just be consciously considering okay, this room, let's go through it. Okay, this closet, let's go through it. So here's a list of places to really look at closely and thoughtfully asking the question, does the stuff I own help to create the life I want? And if it doesn't, why is it here? So one place is your bookshelves, all or any of your bookshelves or your library. You want to keep only the books that, yep, brought you joy, using that phrase, um, but also that are sound reference books or collector items or books that you want to have on hand for any reason, whether to share, to recall a particular detail. But don't keep books just to have more books. They bring more weight, they take up more space, they collect dust, and reflect you inaccurately should anyone scan your book collection. So that's one place to start. The next place is your linen closet or closets. So go through all your bedding, your dining linens, tablecloths, you know, napkins, anything that you store um, and don't use regularly, Uh, bathroom items, towels, bath mats, all those cleaning rags, uh, the cleaning closet with the rags. Any of your entertaining items that you use, you know, the different special um, silverware or plates or, or whatnot. Blankets, if you have a storage place for blankets. Again, if you don't use it, why store it? If it isn't functional, why store it? Um, another place to look at closely are your kitchen cupboards and drawers, as I mentioned just a second ago. As you go through this process, especially in the kitchen, keep a notepad with you and list any items you know you need more of. So maybe, for example, for me, I needed more spatulas at some point because I was always, one was two, all of them were always in the dishwasher whenever I needed one of them. So I was like, okay, that's an item I do need more of. Um, But it goes the other way as well. Have you used this particular thing before or in the past year for any occasion whatsoever? If not, consign it. Be stringent with yourself about letting go of items that just take up space. Don't do an effective job and need to be let go. It will make finding what you do need when you need it far easier and make cooking in the kitchen more enjoyable. The next place to really examine are any drawer or cupboards where you store anything. So anything that I didn't already cover there, make sure you find that cupboard, that closet, whatever, that drawer. Um, you know, I have my drawers in the count on my console table in the foyer, things like that, things that are one off, so to speak. So know what is there. Okay. Know what's in your cupboard. And if you don't use what's in that cupboard, um, you might want to get rid of it. It's okay. Let me just say this real quick. It's okay to have an empty cupboard or an empty drawer. And I'll say that again. Don't be tempted to fill an empty drawer or cupboard. You don't need to fill it. It's okay. And I'm saying that as much to you as I'm saying to myself, because I have now um, an empty entire shelf in my coat closet, in my foyer. And it has been, I mean, I've never had empty shelves before um, in the foyer. I don't have a lot of storage in this house, but I've been able to really pare down because I've been honest with myself about, okay, do you use that? Why are you keeping it? Yes, it might have some memories, but really um, just be really honest. All right, the next thing um, you want to do is go through clothing and coat closets. The seasonal wardrobe assessment is something we talk about often here on the podcast and the blog, and it's a great idea and goes more quickly each time as you get to know and love what you have in your closet. Um, The coat um, closet, and this could also be where you hold any of your outerwear accoutrement um, items, so your hats, your scarves, your, you know, gloves. So this could be drawers, bins, and shelves as well. Um... This is not going to be needed to be cleaned out or assessed as often as your seasonal wardrobe, Um, but you do want to make sure you know what you have and have what you need and donate the rest. The next place to go and and edit is your epicery or your pantry, and I'm just going to advise you to listen to episode 109, which is one of the most popular um, episodes of the show. It's titled The 34 Must-Have Items for Your Home Epicery. And then I'm also going to include a link to um, a partnering post, which is titled Nine Ways to Organize Your Kitchen, Improve Your Health, and Help Out the Planet. 
Um, and I share with you ideas and glimpses of how I keep my pantry or my, or my epistory organized and what I have learned. The next thing to do is also assess and organize your tea or coffee cupboard. Now you can actually look at my tea cupboard. I don't drink coffee. As many of you know, I drink tea. And in episode seven of season three of the Simply Luxurious Kitchen, I was in my kitchen. This was the first year I taped my show in my new kitchen here at Le Papillon. And I show you a video uh, in the video, a peek into my tea cupboard and how I organize it. Um, so just give you an idea to have these areas and, and, and spaces in your home that bring you joy, that make your day a little more enjoyable, and it's easy to find what you want and need. Similarly, organize or assess your candle cupboard or closet. Now, some new listeners may say, what is this? Well, if you've been a longtime listener, you know that in episode 280, the petit plaisir was the suggestion to have a candle cupboard or a candle closet. Now, this idea was brought to my attention from Tan France from Queer Eye fame and stardom. He has a candle closet and he shows that in his tour of his home for Architectural Digest. When he gives his tour of his, tour of his home a couple years ago, he shared this idea and I loved it and I've subsequently done it. I have a, a cupboard, a two shelf cupboard and you want to assess, first of all, the candles that you have, what candles have never been used and why. Donate those that you will never use and then make a plan to shop and welcome in the ones that you love when and if that particular brand or company has a sale. And most of them have a sale at least once a year, sometimes multiple times a year. These are not must-have items. These are not necessities. So you do want to mind your your budget on these, but it's also very nice to have candles in the home or whatever way you bring in scents into your home. And um, when they do have sale, buy more than one. And gradually over time, you'll find that you have a lovely candle cupboard and you can swap them out for seasons or when one is completely finished, you can easily add another without having to go shopping. So again, these are places and spaces to organize that keep things stocked, for the way you live without having things you do not want or need. Next, you want to go through your bathroom drawers, cupboards, and medicine cabinets. So this is an, a must in your primary bathroom and any guest or powder room as well. Be diligent and toss whatever is not used, has expired, etc. As well, make a note of what you always need, what you would like to add to your toiletries to enhance your daily skincare and body care rituals and routines. So Again, this is why this is a, 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 a kind of a gradual thing to do. Don't overwhelm yourself. Take your time so that you're really clear eyed and know what you need and also what you no longer will use. And the last thing I put on this list is the furniture in your house. And this is a big one. Um, you want to assess everything, your chairs, your rugs, your tables, beds, dressers, desks, mirrors, shelves, lamps, large, small things, assess it all and just be honest with yourself, first of all, and just dream. Dream. Don't put a limit on what I'm going to ask you to do in a second. Ask yourself, where do you feel most at peace, comfortable, cozy, relaxed, productive, etc. Based on whatever the function of that room or that space in the house is, do you feel what you desire to have created with the furnishings that you have? Admittedly, once you have your list of what you need but don't have yet, it will take time. Have the patience because once you know how you want to live and feel in your home, the waiting is easier until you find and or save up for what you know will fit perfectly in that particular space. For example, I, and I've talked about this before or at least written about it on the blog, I have always wanted a very comfortable, I'm a tall person, as you know, um, almost six foot. I wanted a, a very comfortable sofa, but also a sofa that was very inviting for someone also to sit upright and have a lovely conversation on. I wanted a sofa that would last the rest of my life. And I've always had an eye on the English rolled arm um, sofas. And it wasn't until I was 42 that I was able to first save up for one, but also to find exactly what I wanted. And then when I purchased it, it took six months for it to be made and then to arrive at my house. 
So it's, it's those things. First, know what you want and why you want it. And then be willing to save up, have patience, and welcome it. And that sofa will be in my life forever. And because I live in a small house, I only need one sofa. So that's also the benefit of having a small home to care for. Less to take care of well, and also less to purchase to fill your home. So you can buy luxuriously. So when we're making this dream plan, be a bit ruthless in letting go of items that don't serve a helpful or comfortable purpose and vow to yourself to not just purchase filler items. So in other words, don't buy that ill-made side table because you need something to put your, your cup on. Instead, you know what you want. You know what you're looking for. You don't have it yet. Be creative with what you have. Maybe pile a stack of big, large books um, and then put a tray on top of that. Be creative and not spend, don't spend money on things that you really don't want that are just filling space. It'll give you more motivation to save and it will make you more appreciative when that item does finally arrive. I've included a link to all the different specific decor posts for customizing your home and taking you through that que- the question process and giving you ideas for specific things. I've linked to that. A lot of them are available for everyone to read. The specific ones on particular rooms are exclusive to top tier readers and members. So make sure to um, explore becoming a member if that's something that interests you because I go into great detail in each of those posts, my objectives, the before, the afters, and I source everything. But I've linked to the the category page so you can see all the different posts and the titles and explore which ones um, you're interested in. So now that you have clarity um, that you either have what you need or know what you need and have let go of the rest, you have let go of some stress, alleviated some unwanted burdens on your ability to relax when you arrive home and are ready to more swiftly and intentionally clean your home regularly without it becoming overwhelming and maybe become even a bit enjoyable. (laughs) So that's number one. Begin with a home and its contents that you actually use and need. Number two. Okay, so that was the one-off, right? Everything else is going to be regular. All right. And the first one, I'm going to start with the daily. The daily simple habits that reduce the amount of weekly and monthly cleaning. When we are at the point of burnout, even the simplest task of picking up after ourselves can be taxing. I can remember more nights than I want to admit while I was both teaching and blogging that I was too tired to entirely pick up the kitchen after cooking dinner before I went to bed. I literally needed more energy and going to bed was a necessity over cleaning the kitchen. Don't worry, I would without fail clean the kitchen in the morning, but that was a task that didn't help to begin the day well. Stepping into a clean kitchen, a clean home each morning is a wonderful way to start the day. And I knew that, but I did not have the energy to make it my regular practices on certain days of the work week. All of this built up to show me that I needed to make a a life change, you know, choose which one are you going to do, which is why I share that with you as well. To acknowledge that you may have an extremely busy schedule at the moment, which is why you think, I cannot keep my house this tidy. I cannot do it. It is impossible. Even though you know you should and you want to. But when you do make the necessary breathing room in your life to tend to these habits daily, it has a beautiful ripple effect of reducing stress increasing clarity, and giving you the ability to make better, more constructive decisions so that you never find yourself in such a schedule again. It seems counterintuitive, but when we are at the point of burnout or nearing it, we can't think clearly. We are in survival mode, and it may seem impossible to see how we can reduce that schedule so that we can tend to something as simple but also as necessary as living in a tidy space. But when you give yourself that shift, when you respect yourself enough to make a shift, it will take time, but you will see that you have more clarity about everything, about people, about things that you you just went along with because you were too tired to even think too deeply about it. And then you start making better decisions and then your life becomes calmer and more enriching and more fulfilling. I'm sharing this because 
As you know, I stepped away, retired from teaching in 2021 after teaching for 20 years, simultaneously teaching and writing for 12. And it really was the last handful of years of doing both that I got to a point of, I do not know how I can keep doing this, but I want to keep doing this. How do I? What do I? And I had to figure it out. And I didn't think I could. I was scared. And I've shared all of this in my book. I've shared a lot of it in previous conversations on the blog and in a couple of, a couple of moments with top tier members. But it's made all the difference in finding the clarity that I needed to know how I want to live moving forward, even though I don't know what's around the corner. Oddly enough, I find more calm, even though my life is less predictable. Okay, so what are the daily habits? I've listed them all in bullet form on the show notes. And the show notes are always found in the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 353 for this particular show note. Okay, so first thing to do, and I'm, I've tried to do them in order of a day. So starting with the morning and going to the evening. Some of them might be um, slightly mixed up, but most of them are in that order. Um, so the first thing is simply clear the bedside table or table of anything such as water glasses, open books, clothes, and restack them neatly so that it's all neat and organized when you return to bed in the evening. Sounds like a simple thing, but... Um, You know, looking at a cluttered space when you go to bed is not going to keep your mind clear when you go to bed at the end of a long day. So just that little habit of, okay, I'm taking my water glass into the kitchen with me now. The next thing is a simple one, but make the bed. Um, Then empty the dishwasher. Now, if you ran it at night, of course, and it's clean, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that um, as well, because having a dirty dishwasher when you need something or having a clean one when it hasn't been emptied is also a bit of a headache, a small headache, a very, very small headache. But again, if we can get into simple habits, um, we really do streamline our life and makes everything so much more enjoyable. Um, the next thing is after you've had breakfast or any meal for that matter, clear the table after that meal. So don't wait, don't just let it sit there. Place the dishes in the dishwasher, not just in the sink. Run the dishwasher when it's full or nearly full and then put it on an eco saver wash. Um, especially if you do just live by yourself such as I do. If it's not super full, then I do it on the on a shorter wash with less water being used. Um, and that way I have my clean dishes, I have a clean dishwasher that's empty and I don't have dishes sitting in the sink throughout the day waiting for it to be emptied. Um, always after you finish working in the kitchen, wipe the kitchen countertops after each use of the kitchen. Empty the trash whenever it's full. Empty the, any recycling bins when they are full to and take them to their exterior destination for pickup on their scheduled day. So what I do, and I've included, I'll include a link to this in my mud room or my boot and basket room. Part of the reason it's called basket is I have baskets on the wall, but I also have a big basket for my recycling. And that's my paper recycling. And I... And it's neat and tidy. And so when I see that getting full, I can quickly take that out to the actual exterior bin. And then it's picked up on its weekly um, weekly day. Um, this next one is a simple one, but often forgotten. And it really can pile up. So upon receiving or picking up your mail, immediately recycle any flyers, mailers, magazines that you don't intend to read or use. Open all the letters and recycle the envelopes and any contents you don't need. Put them right into that recycling bin right there. Um, And place all the mail that you do need to address at some point in a designated basket or holder in the main room where you look at your mail. So part of the problem with this kind of detail is that it, it lingers somewhere. And it doesn't make it to the office or wherever it needs to make it because that's not by the front door that you walk in or by the garage door or wherever you walk in. So have a basket in the place where you walk right in and look at it. And what I do is I have a basket hanging on the wall. Again, why I call the room boot and basket room. There are boots in there too, I promise. (laughs) I have a small basket. And as soon as I go through the envelopes, toss the envelopes in the recycling bin, I put all of the um, items and even my receipts go in here too. When I walk in from coming home from the grocery store or whatever, go right in this basket. And I will then in a couple weeks time, whenever I'm going to sit down and do my budget, whatever it might be, whenever it might be, I take that basket into my office. But that's usually a one or two time a month deal. And the basket just keeps everything neat and tidy. And I've included a link to my boot and basket room. You can take a look at it. I've linked to that basket. I've linked to everything sourced in that room. Again, you'll have to become a top tier member to look at it, but it is a detailed post. And it was actually the first room I completely customized. Um, And you can take a look at all of that. 
The next thing is to place your keys in the same spot every time you walk over the threshold of your home from outside. Just make that a habit so you don't even think about it. Always, always, always. Have hooks on the wall as necessary and or enough hangers or bins in the coat closet or the mudroom for your outerwear, your dog leashes, your scarves, and your umbrellas. Um, Immediately deposit these items in their designated spot when you return home. Just immediately just get into the habit. Put it in the spot. Put it in the spot. That way when you're ready to go again, it's where you want it to be. Fold up blankets in the living room, your snug, the reading nook when you've finished in that particular space. So if you, you're reading at night and you're snug and you get up and you get ready to go to bed, fold the blanket, put it back on the ottoman or the couch or whatever you do so it's ready for you to relax the next day. Similarly, resituate or plump the pillows on any chair or sofa that you sat in upon leaving the room. Going back into the kitchen, clean as you cook. In between steps, not just after the meal is completely done. It'll make it less of a of a headache or a chore when you finish eating dinner or your meal to look at your kitchen and go, oh, I have all this work to do. If you clean up as you go, then it makes it far more enjoyable. As well, return tea trays or food trays back to the kitchen once you have finished relaxing. Don't leave them there to be picked up later. And the next one, this has been a huge change for me. In 2019, so just before I moved into my new home, I had been traveling and one of the vacation rentals had a Dyson um, wireless stick vacuum and they just um, it recharges in their coat, in their, their cleaning closet so you don't see it. It doesn't take up hardly any space and it was really easy for me to keep my vacation rental clean. I could just easily pick up crumbs or whatever and leave the house really nice when I left and I thought to myself, I am getting one of these because I was tired of dealing with cords. I was tired of dealing with a big bulky vacuum cleaner. And I just thought this was a good investment. And I, so I purchased one in the summer of 2019 and I've been using the same one ever since. And it has changed how I keep my house clean on a regular basis. It just is super simple to grab. You swoop it across the floor, pick up any dirt or dust the pups may have brought in from the walk or pick up crumbs from the dinner I just made. And then I can with ease just put the vacuum back into the closet and let it charge. I I do this almost every day because there's always something I'll spill or the pups will bring in, but not every day, but it's there if I need it and I don't put it off. I don't think, oh, I'm going to clean on Friday. I'll just do it then. No, it keeps the house clean. Um, throughout the week. And it's just, it's quiet. It's light. It's very simple. I've linked to the one I have. And the other thing about Dyson, you're going to look at the price and go, oh my goodness. And it's not terrible. I don't, it's, it's less than $400, but it's still an investment. And because it's investment, I got a little nervous. It's a vacuum cleaner for goodness sake, but they have wonderful customer service. So there are a few things I still had to learn about the, the Dyson. And I would call up and you actually speak to a human being and they easily walk you through it. And then you learn how to take care of your Dyson, which is still very simple. It just was new to me. And you feel like, okay, this is going to be around a while. I can take really good care of this. So that's the other little daily habit to get into, whether you have hardwoods or carpets or rugs, whatever. Vacuum is necessary throughout the week. And the last daily habit I would recommend is if you work from home, tidy up your desk top or just the entire office at the end of each workday, preparing it for a clean slate the next day, or if it's Friday for Monday, make sure you have a presentable garbage bin in your office as well. I use one from the citizenry. Um, and while my style isn't any, no longer available, that particular bin, um, they have other small baskets. And so it looks nice, but it also gives me a place to put everything right there when I'm working easy peasy. All right. So that's the list. I've included a post I wrote a couple years ago titled 10 ways to make your office desk space efficient and inspiring. And I've included that on the show notes right there under number two. So those are all the daily simple tasks that can reduce the amount of weekly and monthly cleaning. Number three, choose one day during the week, an afternoon or morning, early or late, whatever works best for you, that you can designate one to two hours to clean. Now again, I am not someone who enjoys cleaning, but when I used to write this task in my planner, I sighed a bit because I would have rather been doing something else. 
And prior to retiring from teaching, it would have been just having more time to relax at my home after a long week of work. Now it's time that I want to create, to explore, to be with my pups without a vacuum or a cleaning rag or mop in my hand. (laughs) However, number three, choosing this one day of the week, designating one to two hours is a little bit of a misnomer because you don't have to do all of the same cleaning tasks each day of the week. Rather, you are going to alternate a few. Let me explain. It was an aha moment for me. The first time I hired a cleaning service to regularly clean my house. They came every other week. And I thought to myself, how can I possibly wait two weeks to have my house clean? No, 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 no. (laughs) After all, for years, I had attentively cleaned my house each Friday after work, no matter what I was up to later that evening or how long my week had been, without fail. Every Friday, my house would get cleaned. Well, what I discovered was that if you clean it well every other week and tend to those daily habits I just shared, your house will be just fine and you will be less stressed and have more free time. So what to do each week? And I've designated and will share with you the ones I would recommend just doing every other week. Vacuuming. The floors, the hardwoods, carpets, rugs, upholstered furniture, pillows, window trims, so the little ledges where they collect dust, vacuum it all. Next thing, clean the stovetop, also known as the hob. Get some good dish soap and water, some stainless steel cleaner if necessary. I use Easy Bright as it's environmentally friendly and clean the hob every single week. Of course, if you don't cook, that's a whole nother story, but I am cooking at least twice a day, so it gets dirty. Um, and I do wipe it up and try to stay clean throughout the week, but it's impossible. Next thing is wipe down the fronts of the dishwasher, refrigerator, cupboard fronts, and around the handles of the cupboards as they tend to get the most dirty when they're being frequently touched. Again, if you have stainless steel appliances, use the Easy Bright. It's wonderful. It's not that expensive and it does do the job. The next thing I would recommend is, and this could be every other week, it really depends on your household, wipe down doors, especially near the handles to remove any prints. So I have white doors. And they'll be, uh, the, over time, they just build up the ones going out to the garage, the ones going outside. And I'll just need to remind myself to clean those. So simple to do. So, so simple. The next thing is also every other week, and it's to dust. And I say this, you can do this every week, but it really isn't necessary. Do it every other week. Save yourself some stress. Know that the next week you're going to get it taken care of and all will be well. Also, every other week, I'm going to shock you here, mop all of your floors. I used to do this each week, but no longer. If it was a particularly dirty week or I had a dinner party coming up, of course I'll mop. But so long as I vacuum regularly, or I remove my shoes and wash the paws of my pups when we return from a dust-filled or mud-filled walk, the floors stay presentable until the following week. And it saves me, it saves my back. It's, I mean, I, I do it pretty simply. I don't have a fancy um, mopping system, but because I don't have, again, a huge house. I have a very small house. But that also just eased my mind a bit. The next thing, and I definitely do this once a week, and I recommend that you do too, is to welcome fresh flowers into the house. Welcome in between one to three small bouquets placed in a living room, bedroom, dining room, foyer, or office. And I usually pick them up at Trader Joe's or I source them from my own garden during the warmer months. And sometimes I pick them up at the farmer's market. Now I will share that prior to moving to Bend, we didn't have a Trader Joe's. And so it was a luxury to welcome a nice small bouquet. And I do mean small bouquet into my house. Um, But when I could go to Trader Joe's and I could spend the same amount of money on two or three bouquets, I appreciate it so much more um, because I know this is not always the case and I have a a luxury to have something like that available. But at the same time, just having one bouquet, one bouquet, move it around the house. I've had uh, uh, listeners and readers share that they do this and I do this too now. In fact, the ranunculas that I have on my desk right now, and you may have seen the picture um, yesterday on my Instagram, those ranunculas were in my bedroom, but then I came to the office today and I said, nope, you're coming with me. So move them around. You don't have to have a lot of bouquets, just a beautiful bouquet that really speaks to you and move it around with you. Trim it every four to five days, fresh water, and it will last a quite a long time. All right. So that's every week. Absolutely. I usually pick those up on Monday when I do my weekly grocery run. 
All right, next, here we go. Clean and wash your bed linens every week. Um, Air dry the sheets to ensure they last longer, especially linen sheets. Do not put linen sheets in the dryer. Um, Even during the winter, I will lay my sheets over the backs of my dining room table chairs near the fireplace and let them dry. Um, And even if it's a really nice day in the middle of January, I will put them out there. If there's no moisture coming, I will put them out there in the sun. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely um, save your sheets by not putting them in the dryer. Um, Next thing, wash any regularly used towels from the bathroom or kitchen. Do that every week. Clean bathrooms that receive regular use. This can be done every other week depending upon how heavily the bathroom is used. And for bathrooms that are used occasionally, such as guest or powder rooms, monthly is fine. As well, clean any mirrors or windows, glass doors, and remove all those those nose prints is what I'm cleaning up for my pups. I have all sorts of nose prints on my kitchen garden door um, or any fingerprints. Remove those. Um, each week, I would go through your refrigerator as well. And this will give you an opportunity to assess prior to heading out for your weekly grocery outing, what you have, what you need, and what you actually enjoy eating. Because if something's still sitting there that you purchased last week, um, why did you not use it? And you can have that conversation with yourself. Each week, also wash your dog or cat food dishes. Just run them through the dishwasher or hand wash them. Um, If you have a microwave, I do not have a microwave, but if you do, clean inside and uh, the front window or door and do that weekly, depending on, again, how often you use it. And last one is a very simple one, but clean any switch plates for any regularly touched light switches. It's a little thing that, again, just adds a little extra polish to your cleanliness. So those are weekly, sometimes every other week um, tasks to tend to. And if you did all of those things, so on the off week, when you're not mopping, not dusting, this could take 30 minutes and you'd be done. And that's the nice part about that. All right. So that's number three. Choose one day during the week, an afternoon or morning, early or late, that you can designate one to two hours to clean. All right. I have three more ideas for maintaining and keeping your home clean as well as keeping you stress-free. I'll be right back after this one-minute sponsor introduction. Bombas makes getting active more comfortable with socks that support your sport, breathable t-shirts that keep you from overheating, and underwear made to move with you. I regularly pull on my Bomba socks when I'm heading up to the mountain to do one more ski before the snow melts or going on our regular walks in the neighborhood or on the trails with the dogs. And you know, those socks do exactly that. They're comfortable. They don't overheat and they have lasted a very long time. Socks, underwear, and t-shirts are the number one, two, and three most requested items in homeless shelters. That's why for every comfy item you purchase, Bombas donates another comfy item to someone experiencing homelessness. Bombas are a gym bag staple that are made to last, and if they experience any wear and tear, Bombas will replace them for life. Go head to toe Bombas in lightweight t-shirts designed to feel cool against your skin. Underwear so airy and breathable you may forget you're wearing any. And socks designed to make every workout more comfortable. No matter how you like to get active, Bombas has something for you. Gripper socks help you stay balanced in Pilates and bar. Left right foot contouring running socks give you a perfect fit that won't slide in your shoe. And merino wool golf socks keep you comfy and supported all day while at the course. Bomba's 100% happiness guarantee means you're covered for life. Reach out anytime to their happiness team for easy returns, exchanges, or replacements. As a simple Sophisticate listener, go to bombas.com slash Sophisticate and use code Sophisticate for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas, B-O-M-B-A-S dot com slash Sophisticate and use code Sophisticate at checkout. Welcome back. Let's get right back into our list of how to have a stress-reducing year-round schedule for house cleaning and maintenance for a small household. Number four is the quarter or every three months or seasonal tasks. Many of the items on this list will come from tasks that 
I shared just a while ago in number three that just don't need to be done as often depending upon how you live or they're items that you need to do a little bit more frequently than what I'm going to list in number five, which is twice a year. So here we go. Thoroughly clean all trash canisters and or recycling bins. Dust lamps, shelves, and any place that can collect dust that you can't reach easily or isn't seen or used regularly. Dust computer screens. This may be done more frequently, but at least every three months. Launder all blankets used in the living room or in snugs and reading nooks. Clean dust and or wipe down items in trays and vignettes on top of console tables, dressers, coffee tables, etc. Store seasonal decor in a clearly labeled box or bin and place where it doesn't distract and is out of the way. This might be your garage, your attic, or a storage space. So those are just a handful of things that as I was going through the list, I was thinking, oh, what about this? What about that? And I am figuratively just scouring through my life and my last couple years that I've lived in this house and what I do and what works, what I no longer need to do. And those were things that I still needed to do, but I don't do them that frequently. But you wouldn't want to forget to do them. Nobody wants to forget to clean out their trash canister. (laughs) All right. So that's number four, quarterly, seasonally, or every three months. Number five, what to do twice a year during a day or a couple of days that you have energy. So ideally, after a day, you have been able to rest. So one time of year, I tend to many annual or semi-annual tasks is during the week between the years. And it's that final week of the year when I'm able to have a week to tidy up, whichever way feels good upon going into a new year. So What I find is when I do give myself time to rest, then I'm like, oh yeah, I want to get this done. That'll feel great. But I have to rest first. So here's the list. Clean all the windows inside and out. Flip the mattress. Clean and reorganize the pantry. Now I put an asterisk next to this one because this happens at least once a year, sometimes twice. And as I become more clear about what I need, and then more organized to refill when I run out as it happens, I have found that I tend to this task less often, which is why I say, yeah, maybe twice a year initially, but then you'll find that you don't need to do it so often. Um, the next thing is to thoroughly clean your refrigerator, remove the drawers, the linings of any side shelves, and clean, 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 clean. If you have been assessing your, your refrigerator every week, as I mentioned um, earlier in our conversation, this will not be a difficult task and it should only take about 30 minutes. That's what I've found for myself. The more I put off assessing my refrigerator, the longer the big task tends to take. Um, Clean your oven thoroughly. Again, this will depend on how often you use it, but you definitely want to do it at least once a year, likely twice a year. Launder your pillows. Um, I cover my pillows with a liner, also known as a pillow protector, and then placed a pillowcase over the top of those. This helps to protect the pillow itself. And so I wash those once um, or twice a year. Um, next thing is to wipe the baseboards and any moldings. And this can be done once a year, depending upon the work you have had done in your home. What I mean by that is if you've had some construction in your home, or if you leave your windows open often, so a lot of dust accumulates, then you might want to do this more frequently. Um, so you know how dusty or dirty your house might become in those nooks and crannies and, and little ledges. Next thing is to clean the kitchen range hood. This is something that is on my list currently. Um, Clean the filter in your dishwasher. Definitely once a year. This is so easy to do, um, but it prevents the dishwasher telling you that it needs to be cleaned and refusing to wash your dishes at the worst time. So do this preventatively. Um, Clean any bird feeders or bird cafes, as I like to call them. This can be done more often if you have an active bird cafe. Clean under and around any furniture that isn't regularly vacuumed or moved. Clean the garage thoroughly and edit as you go. Have the sprinkler system, if you use one, turned on in the spring and winterized in the fall. Cover and or remove vent covers for winterizing and then come spring, remove and store them. Exterior hoses, watering cans, non-frost proof pots in the garden. Drain all the water out of the hose and the cans and store everything safely. And this would be done again. Springtime, you take it out. 
fall, you would put it away. That's why it's on the twice a year. Replace the water filter in your refrigerator or other water dispensing device. And this will be dependent upon your water filter, but I wanted to include this on the list just to remind ourselves. And the last thing is if you have a house, um, you likely have gutters. So clean the gutters. This could be done just once a year, but it depends on the surrounding area and what kind of debris could fall into your gutters. I have a huge pine tree over one of my gutters that always gets full, so I do it twice a year. And I usually do that spring and fall because of the weather. And I can safely get up on the roof or climb up on a ladder. So that's number five, um, the things we should do twice a year. Um, but making sure that we give ourselves a day prior to doing these tasks where we're, we rest, we don't push ourselves so that we, again, we can hopefully enjoy the task a little bit more. Um, the last but not least are the yearly tasks and yearly as the time fits your calendar or season for whatever the task is and your schedule. So the yearly tasks will be dependent upon your home, your climate and other variables. But whenever you tend to what you need to choose a time that works with your schedule, budget and the best time of year to tend to this task if it requires, for example, you to be outside. First thing on the list is to service your HVAC. So this is your heating, your air conditioning units. This will prevent any surprises during the winter or the summer when you want to be able to trust your heat source or your cooling source is working properly. Um, the next one is to clean your fireplace if you have a traditional wood burning fireplace. Also deep clean any carpet and rugs either done by professional or on your own. Have any curtains or hanging fabric cleaned. Don't forget to clean your upholstered furniture. Now I have quite a bit of upholstered furniture and some of it can be done by professional. But one time I hired a professional to come in and clean everything and he pointed out certain things he can't do because it's just too delicate. And he then cleaned it by hand, but he showed me how to do it and he gave me the, the, the product that he used for it. And so I now continually buy this product. And this is a this is an all-natural cleaning product called Nurturals, and I link to it. I get the concentrates, and then I add it to the spray bottle, and I clean. Um, but I do this, depending upon how heavily used a particular piece of furniture is, I do this twice a year. My, For example, my dining room tables get it twice a year. Um, some of the furniture, like Norman's favorite chair, gets cleaned twice a, twice a year. The silk on that needs to be delicately cleaned. But yeah, so... Don't forget to clean your, your, your upholstery and it will last a lot longer. Um, also clean around dryer vents and any vents in your home um, above the stove, for example, but also clean where they leave the house on the exterior of your house. And then when spring rolls around, um, and also in the fall, you could do this twice, um, but it so just depends. Clean your porches or balcony deeply. And I typically do the deep clean in March, just as I'm setting everything out, pulling all the furniture out from the garage. But you could also do this in fall when you're storing it as well. Something else to do yearly is to test and or replace smoke alarm batteries. Um, when you do this, my dad taught me this one, uh, write the date on the battery when you first put it in. So when it's a brand new battery, put the date that you installed it so that you know how long that battery has been in use. So that when you go around your house and check every year, um, this might be a great in between the year task. So that last week of the year, you know, oh, this battery has only been in there for a year. There's no reason for me to replace it. The reason you want to replace, even if the battery is still working, is you do not want to be woken up in the middle of the night from a faulty battery that's dying of a fire alarm. Those are the most annoying noises. And oh, anyway, so just something that I've learned from experience <laughs> um, to replace those in a timely fashion. And this one's optional, and it really depends on where you live and the city ordinances of your community. Um, we have to have our water backflow tested by an approved business every single year. So if there's anything you need to do for the city or for where you live and your community, maybe there's something you have to do for your HOA, that's something to keep on your list as well. All right, so that's the last of the items to do to um, year round, keep your house tidy and clean and also maintain to avoid any unwanted maintenance down the road. Just looking back at this list, and again, I'll put this on a PDF for you, a checklist, a table that you can print off for free. It might seem like a tremendous amount, but again, what you are taking care of are items and spaces in your home that bring you comfort, calm, and repose, and it becomes motivating to keep them at their best, which is why... I began with number one, start by ensuring you have what you love and what brings you comfort. And if it doesn't, get rid of it. 
when we remove what feels like a burden because we never use it or it simply takes up space or it holds memories we don't want to revisit, then tidying up does become more of a chore. All right. Once number one has been taken care of, you can spread out all of these tasks over the course of 12 months. It actually isn't that much or that bad. In fact, while I compared this to the list I wrote in 2011, the new list, today's list, is quite extensive due to the fact that I have a far smaller house, nearly half the size, than what I did when I wrote this previous list. But all that I do now is actually far less and done far better, which ensures that I can space out the time between tasks or when I do them more frequently, not have that much work to do. So it's an interesting paradox here. I actually found that by spacing things out, but doing them better, I have less work to do and more enjoyment when I'm in my home every single day. Now, compiling this list occurred on a wonderfully rainy day. I I was yesterday, I was writing this list here in Bend and the rain came down to smashing against the windows for a handful of hours. And so It gave me time to reflect on a year's worth of responsibilities. And that's what I've tried to do here is really just go through my life. What do I do as I move through the year? And I have to say, I am so grateful to be able to do all these things. And what I mean by that is I've always wanted a home that I owned in Bend, Oregon. It took me far longer than I expected to be able to do that. So now that I have a house that I can take care of, It is a joy. It is far more enjoyable. Yahoo! I have windows to clean. I have windows to clean. I have I have borrowed space and wonderful natural light that gets to come in. And I want to make sure all that light comes in. So I'm gonna clean those windows. Which all leads me to my final idea for creating more enjoyment of the task of caring for our homes. Here it is. Why not name your home? I know it may sound silly at first. And as you all know, based on my third book title and my talking here on the podcast and the blog, I named my house Le Papillon. And I explain exactly why I named it that in the book. But when we humanize the space that gives us life, safety, security, comfort, nurtures, love and care, it reminds us that it's more than the four walls and in a way, a part of our family, so to speak. And that too helps in providing an internal motivation to care for it well. And with that to ponder, wishing you a wonderful start to a brand new season when spring arrives next Monday, the 20th. I'll include the link to the free PDF for this cleaning schedule. And you can find the show notes in this entire list on the blog at the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 353. I'll be right back with this week's Petit Plaisir. This week's Petit Plaisir is a simple enjoyment that punctuates the end of my day. It is sipping tisan tea, or just tisan, at the end of the day. And all tisan is, is an herbal tea, so non-caffeinated tea, to wind down the day well with warmth and comfort. And something that is good for you as well. Now, I want to share with you specifically the varietal that I use and have been enjoying for, well, quite a while, many years. It's from Palais de Thé, and it is one of their many La Oberiste varietals. The one I enjoy, and I shared actually this with um, viewers for my for my cooking show this past season, season five, but it's their number 74, and they have them all numbered, and this one is a combination of lime flower, chamomile, and orange blossom, but I will link to all of the varietals because they have uh, verbena, orange, mint, turmeric, licorice, verbena, um, apple, spices, um, so, I mean, anise, uh, lemon balm, peppermint, lemongrass, uh, there, there's quite, I listed all of them there, but I've included a link to the page where you can find all of them and you can buy them in loose leaf form. You can buy them in sachets. You can buy them in canisters. You can buy them in bags. You can buy them in so many different forms, but I highly recommend it. Um, this is 
a drink that has been around as long as history has been around. Technically, <laughs> it uh, it started or was first popular popularized back in China. Um, the legend has it that it began back in 2700 BC. So herbal tea or tisane, as we often hear it said, as I always, I always hear Hercule Poirot's voice in my head, or should I say David Suchet's voice in my head, um, who enjoys his tisane tea um, as he lets his little gray cells do their work. But that is just a simple pleasure that I will pair with a, a dark chocolate truffle in the evening, reading a book, watching a, a new episode of a, of a favorite British cozy mystery or a French series, and uh, just be grateful for time to do that in a home that's tidy and clean <laughs> to tie it all together. So you can find the link to my favorite um, Tassanti from Palais de Té. La Herboriste, number 74, or look at all the varietals. All those links are on the show notes at simplyluxuriouslife.com slash podcast 353, or you can go directly to the Petit Plaisir show notes, and the link is the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash PP353, Tisane, T-I-S-A-N-E. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each episode where I'll recommend a book, a film, a show, a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. I wanted to let listeners know that the annual sale on top tier memberships is coming up in April and it's only going to be for a few days. It will not reoccur throughout the year. And it is an opportunity to take advantage of a permanent savings on the top tier memberships. So if you haven't already signed up for the weekly or monthly newsletter, I'll alert you to those dates. Again, it will be in April. And um, I look forward to welcoming you into the community where we really do discuss as well as support each other as we all are living our unique, simply luxurious lives all around the world. If you have any questions, check out the simplyluxuriouslife.com slash member or slash subscribe. Both of those will take you to the same page and it'll tell you all about the many benefits of becoming a top tier member. And until our next episode, which will be Wednesday, April 5th, I hope you have a wonderful remainder of this month of March and I will see you on the blog. Bonjour. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, visit the blog, The Simply Luxurious Life, with the shortened URL, tsll.co, or thesimplyluxuriouslife.com. For more in-depth exploration of how to cultivate your own unique, simply luxurious life, pick up my new book, which became both a bestseller and number one new release in France Travel, The Road to Le Papillon, Daily Meditations on True Contentment, available in all four formats for your preferred reading or listening. My first book, titled Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, and my second book, Living the Simply Luxurious Life, are also available in each of the four formats. Readers can now join the more intimate the Simply Luxurious Life international community by becoming members of the blog, which offers the benefits of ad-free reading site-wide, unlimited access and exclusive access to content on the blog, such as the monthly A Cup of Moments with Shannon video chat, tours of my home Le Papillon, the monthly What Made Me Smile post, and monthly Ponderings post, as well as the exclusive opportunity to enter all of the giveaways during the annual French and British weeks. To stay caught up on all things Simply Luxurious, the podcast, blog post, the cooking show, and receive exclusive news, as well as an extra dose of inspiration to jumpstart each new month, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Live's free monthly newsletter, arriving on the last day of each month in your inbox. There is also a weekly newsletter, which is also free, and arrives each Friday to keep you caught up on the recent weekly posts on the blog. Enjoy with a hot cuppa or cup of morning coffee, and stay in the know about all things Simply Luxurious. Look for two new episodes of this podcast on the first and third Wednesday of each month. And until next time, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Thank you for tuning in. 
Bonjour.